Could the veil have killed Voldemort? Hey, brother! Okay, you guys, today should be interesting. Inside of any fictional world, there can always be the introduction of a magical artifact or object that can uniquely do something that nothing else can. And it's usually objects like these that are just so powerful that they're the centerfold for the entire plot. The Philosopher's Stone, for example, was created by Nicholas Flamel, and near as I can tell is the only one that has ever been created and is capable of providing immortality. Are you a ghost? No. I'm alive, but I'm an alchemist and therefore immortal. And I suspect that the stone probably would have continued to be an object of Voldemort's desire if Nicholas Flamel himself hadn't realized the dangers of its own existence and was able to accept his own death in the process of destroying it. Another great example of an object like this might be Time Turners from Prisoner of Azkaban. As a young kid reading this third book, I absolutely loved going back the second time with the knowledge of the Time Turners and seeing all the little moments where it was clearly relevant. Where did you come from? Because now you know how Hermione is able to make it to all of her various classes and how at certain times in the story, she just seems to randomly appear out of nowhere. But similar to the Philosopher's Stone, the Time Turners themselves also needed to meet their fate, so to speak. Otherwise, you, the reader, might just be wondering why the Golden Trio isn't constantly solving all of their problems through time travel. Their destruction, however, is much less of a major plot point in a sort of blink and you miss it moment in the Half-Blood Prince where Hermione's like, no, we can't can't do that, we destroyed them all last year at the Department of Mysteries, remember? Mom? So while the battle at the Department of Mysteries was able to solve the time turner problem, it also introduces a new magical artifact altogether that is much, much more ominous with its own unique powers, and that is the veil. If you will recall, the veil is located deep inside of the Department of Mysteries, and we actually know from Pottermore that the entire Ministry of Magic was specifically built around the veil itself. And I'm sure this is significantly due to the fact that the veil has one unique power in that it is a one-way portal to death. We, the audience, only ever actually see it happen once inside of the story when Sirius Black is blasted backwards through the veil and it takes his life. The really interesting question that the veil presents to the rest of the entire narrative is, just how powerful is it? Or maybe more specifically, and the topic of today's discussion is, what would have happened if somebody had successfully blasted Voldemort himself through the veil. Is it possible that this would have been a different way to defeat the Dark Lord himself, or would his Horcruxes have still angered him to life? It's a simple question to ask, a complex question to answer. Today, we will discuss. Okay, so as you may expect, whenever you're dealing with souls and death and the afterlife and horcruxes, there is a lot to consider and a lot of speculation to be had. So for a second, let's just examine what would happen if just a regular person passes through the veil. And again, the only example we have is Sirius Black. When Sirius passes through, it is his entire body and soul that pass through. And after which neither his body or soul are recoverable, at all. The thing I do want to clarify here is that it's the act of crossing through the veil that does take Sirius's life. And I bring this up in particular because at least in the movies, we see that Bellatrix Lestrange actually hits Sirius with an Avada Kedavra spell, and then he sort of like falls backwards into the veil after the fact, and the Avada Kedavra spell obviously would be the cause of death within the movie. However, that's not what happens in the books. Key point is that it's the veil that takes Sirius's life, not Bellatrix's spell. However, despite his death, it's not entirely the end of the story for Sirius. Eventually, Harry is still able to recall Sirius, Remus, and his parents via the Resurrection Stone. The key distinction here is that while the veil itself is a unique construct, the way in which it takes a life is just like any other. People who pass through aren't lost to the void or a limbo or some version of that. It's just simply the afterlife. But even within that, there is a distinction that we can make. It's that your body is not what passes on to the afterlife, but rather your soul. And this can actually be proven in two other ways. The first of which is that we actually see what happens to Voldemort's soul in death. It's the version of Voldemort that we see on the floor of King's Cross Station after Harry has sacrificed himself. It is a version of Voldemort's soul that is just simply too maimed to pass on beyond limbo. Beyond that though, we also have the description of what it is like for the second Peveril brother when he uses the Resurrection Stone. To his amazement and his delight, the figure of the girl he had once hoped to marry before her untimely death appeared at once before him. Yet she was sad and cold, separated from him as by a veil. Though she had returned to the mortal world, she did not truly belong there 
and suffer. What that means is that nobody would ever be able to call on Voldemort using the Resurrection Stone because he never fully passes on to the true afterlife. Also beyond that, the Resurrection Stone can only be used to recall loved ones and Voldemort doesn't have any of those. So he was pretty much screwed either way. Which is additionally ironic when you consider the fact that the Resurrection Stone itself was the one Deathly Hallow that was in fact a family heirloom for Tom Riddle himself. The guy really just was just, he was just the worst. The point is though, if Voldemort's soul is so badly maimed, that when it comes time for his final destruction, he's not even able to pass on to the true afterlife? Then what would have happened if Voldemort was somehow actually able to pass through the veil? Would he have been able to like actually pass through, achieve a meaningful death? visit the afterlife? And again, it's just not that simple to answer because Voldemort himself is not a regular being. He's not even a regular evil being for that matter. And that has to do, of course, with the reason why his soul is so badly damaged in the first place. And that's the creation of his seven Horcruxes. So before we can even truly and properly examine that caveat, let's just talk about like, what would have happened if you had tossed a Horcrux itself through the veil. Is it as powerful as something like Basilisk Venom or Fiend Fire to where it just would have been quite literally capable of destroying the Horcrux itself? And I think the answer to that is, while it's not exactly the same, I think the end result is pretty similar. Hermione explains it best. Horcrux is the complete opposite of a human being. Look, if I picked up a sword right now, Ron, and ran you through with it, I wouldn't damage your soul at all. Whatever happens to your body, your soul will survive, untouched but it's the other way around with a Horcrux. The fragment of soul inside it depends on its container, its enchanted body for survival. It can't exist without it. So what we've already established with Sirius is that when he passes through the veil, the veil is capable of separating Sirius's body from his soul, even though in the process, both are completely lost. So say Nagini, who is both a living creature and a Horcrux, were tossed through the veil. I think the same would happen. The soul is removed and now dead. But Voldemort, of course, also has non-living Horcruxes. Would they be destroyed too? And the answer is, Maybe? Either it acts exactly the same and the soul is simply removed from its container and is now dead on the other side, or in possibly even more interestingly, is that the Horcrux itself would physically stay intact, then pass through to the afterlife, where it would then serve as a reverse Horcrux of sorts, anchoring Voldemort's soul to the afterlife. And if he only had the one Horcrux, this should mean that he would just then be instantly killed because he would be anchored to the afterlife. However, as we've also already established, Voldemort is not your typical evil and has multiple Horcruxes. So he would be anchored to both the afterlife and life. So hilariously may once again find himself locked in limbo. However, what I do find particularly interesting about this entire scenario is the idea that if Voldemort had had the foresight to take one of his Horcruxes, toss it through the veil, and it did provide him an anchor to the afterlife, then when Harry ultimately defeats him, it actually would have provided Voldemort with an escape from limbo and be able to pass on to the afterlife, which is a far superior fate. But of course, anybody who is going through the trouble of creating a Horcrux in the first place would never take that particular precaution because the entire objective of creating Horcruxes in the first place is to never die. So yeah, kind of rules itself out. Guys, let me just pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, MeUndies. Let me ask you a question. You don't have to tell anybody, just think it inside of your head, but be honest with yourself. Do you have a favorite pair of undies that when you put them on, you just feel luckier, better that whole day? Cause I certainly do, and I wouldn't have them without MeUndies. And in the beginning of my MeUndies subscription, it was just literally like, whichever pair of MeUndies happened to be clean that day was my lucky pair. But the great news is at this point in time, I have an entire drawer full. So every day feels lucky. And my favorite part is that throughout the course of the year, there are so many different themed pairs that based on what time of year it is or what's going on in my own personal life, I always feel like I've got something that like fits the occasion perfectly. So if you find yourself fancying a fun and vibrant day, they have a wide range of bold colors. If you're looking to break a sweat, they have their Move Me collection designed for movement. If you want some downtime, they have the classic hues that offer the comfiest of vibes. And like I said, I've got my bases covered 
for all of these situations. Like today I've got fandom inspired on because we're doing a fandom inspired video because that's what we do here at Super Carlin Brothers. At this point, there is literally only one thing in my drawer and it's me undies. And it's because I just find them to be the highest quality and most comfortable form of underbritches. Plus with me undies, that comfort is a guarantee. No matter what you're doing day to day, me undies make sure that you feel good from the inside out. And you can get a 25% off discount on your first order and free shipping when you head on over to meundies.com slash theories. And here's their promise. If you're not completely satisfied with your purchase, it's on MeUndies. So don't wait, get 25% off your first order when you head on over to meundies.com slash theories. MeUndies.com slash theories, link in the description down below. So limbo it is for Voldemort. And in case you're wondering, the way that I imagine this particular scenario was like being at the DMV where you're absolutely certain that you have an appointment, but you definitely don't. The DMV is open 24 hours a day and it's like really cold in there and you forgot to bring a light jacket. So you're like shivering, but not properly freezing. And unfortunately on top of that, you also have a cold and your nose is running and you don't want to alarm any of the people around you by being like, you know, all sniffly and everything. But of course you also don't have any tissues. And in the case of Voldemort, you don't even have a nose. It really is just like your worst nasally nightmare come to life. Well, not life, but also not death. You get what I'm saying. But more importantly, is that just our answer that the veil would kill Voldemort if he passed through it? And no, it wouldn't because the piece of soul that resides in Voldemort Prime, his physical living body, is actually different from the other pieces of his soul that were used to create the Horcruxes. Dumbledore tells Harry, the seventh part of his soul, however maimed, resides inside of his regenerated body. That was the part of him that lived as a spectral existence for so many years during his exile. Without that, he has no self at all. That seventh piece of soul will be the last that anyone wishing to kill Voldemort must attack. The piece that lives in his body. So a couple of things. Dumbledore says, without that, he has no self at all. That suggests, at least to me, that the piece of soul in his prime body is the one that actually has the sense of self. <laughs> Dumbledore also specifies that if you wanted to destroy him, that would need to be the last piece of soul to ultimately attack, because if you just attack his body before then, then his soul will again be anchored to life via his horcruxes. But if you'll notice, none of his other horcruxes act as anchors for each other when each of them is destroyed. Isn't that kind of interesting? What it also means though, is that if you were to throw each of the Horcruxes through the veil, then conceivably all of those Horcruxes would be destroyed. But Voldemort Prime is still different. Instead, his body would in fact be destroyed, but his soul would be like running into a glass wall. As his body passed through, his soul would be ripped from it and anchored to life thanks to all of his various Horcruxes. This is actually exactly what happens to Voldemort when he attempts to kill baby Harry. Harry is of course protected by his mother's sacrifice, but Voldemort absolutely is not, and it's the Avada Kedavra spell. So when it strikes him, it destroys his physical being. All that's left is the mist-like form of his soul. The way he describes it to his Death Eaters is like this. I was ripped from my body. I was less than spirit, less than the meanest ghost, but still I was alive. Again, it's that mist or spectral existence that we always talk about. Eventually he is able to form into like a rudimentary existence that we see at the beginning of Goblet of Fire. And then thanks to all of Wormtail's help, the physical form we ultimately know Voldemort to have at the end. But the prime soul is the only one that is actually capable of doing this. All the other Horcruxes simply prevent him from passing on to the afterlife. None of the rest of the Horcruxes, however, would be able to act of their own accord to attempt to achieve a physical body with the single exception of the diary. Because you may be sitting there thinking like, well, the diary did seem to have a rather considerable sense of self for Voldemort and almost did come back to life at the end of Chamber of Secrets. And that is true, but I think it has much, much, much more to do with the nature of how the diary was created. Tom Riddle himself had injected it with lots of his own thoughts and memories. But the Tom Riddle that came out of the diary is not the same as Voldemort Prime, the one who returns in the graveyard of Little Hangleton. He is still in fact dangerous and evil, but he is still only comprised of all of the memories and thoughts that young Tom Riddle was able to inject into the diary. He doesn't know everything else that has happened within the wizarding world. In fact, the only way that he even knows that Harry Potter someday defeats him is because Ginny told him through the diary. 
So in a way, the diary is a lot more similar to like a portrait at Hogwarts, where it's a depiction of the person it represents, and it has some of the information that the portrait was told about the person who had lived, but doesn't have all of the wisdom of intelligence of the person themselves. So in summary, no, the Vale would not be capable of destroying Voldemort unless all of his other Horcruxes had already been destroyed, in which case Voldemort passing through the Vale actually would have provided him with a overall better outcome because he could have successfully passed on to the afterlife. Instead, he's in limbo, waiting for his number to be called with his sniffly not nose. On that note, guys, for my question of the day, be sure to let me know what do you think limbo would be like? Just whatever, whatever the worst thing you can imagine Voldemort's soul having to do for the rest of forever. You know, just be sure to let us know in the towel section down below. Make it as hilarious as you can. Also guys, before I sign off, I want to let you know that we have a super Carlin Brothers meetup on the horizon. It is right here in Roanoke, Virginia at the historic Grandin Theater where we are going to be hosting your classic trivia night, like the Kahoot trivia that we do on our live streams here on Super Carlin Brothers, but in person with amazing prizes. We have a link to get tickets to that in the description down below. It's just 20 bucks. And we'll also be having a live performance for free of our podcast, Popcorn Culture, the very next day, also in Roanoke. So be sure to check out all that information again in the description down below. But as ever, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to find out who made the Mirror of Erised, it's one of my favorite Potter theories that we've made here recently. It's right over here. But otherwise, guys, until next time, bye!